Hi students, I am Pravin Sebastian Paul. In this lecture, we are discussing the functional modeling. Functional modeling gives the process perspective of the object-oriented analysis model and an overview of what the system is supposed to, to do. It defines the functions of the internal processes in the system with the aid of data flow diagrams. It depicts the functional derivatives of the data values without indicating how they are derived when they are computed or why they need to be computed. So data flow diagrams are important topic to be discussed in the functional modeling and now we are going to discuss the data flow diagrams. The functional modeling is represented through a hierarchy of DFDs or data flow diagrams. The DFD is a graphical representation of a system that shows the input to the system, the processing upon the input, the output of the system as well as the internal data stores. DFDs illustrate the series of transformations or computations performed on the object or system and the external controls and the objects that affect the transformation. Rampog defined the data flow diagrams as a data flow diagram is a graph which show the flow of data values from their sources in the object through the process that transform them to their destination on other objects. The main four parts of data flow diagrams are process, data flow, actors and data stores. And it also has other parts like constraints and control flow and we are going to discuss each of these features. Firstly, we are discussing the feature process. Processes are the computational activities that transforms the data values. A whole system can be visualized as a high level process. A process may be further divided into smaller components. The lowest level process may be a simple function. In the data flow diagram, a process is represented as an ellipse with its name written inside it in and contains a fixed number of input and output data values. For example, the figure shows the process compute HCF LCM that accepts two integers as input and outputs are HCF and LCM. So the processes are represented in an elliptical structure with a name in it and it has inputs which is represented by an incoming arrow and it provides output which is arrows flowing from these processes. The next topic is the data flows. The data flows represents the flow of data between two processes. It could be between an actor and a process or between a data store and a process. A data flow denotes the value of the data items at some point of the computation. This value is not changed by the data flow. In the DFD, a data flow is represented by a directed arc or an arrow labeled with the name of the data item that it carries. In this figure, the integer A and integer B represents the input data flow to the process while ELCM and HCF are the output data flows. Sometimes the data flow may be forked those conditions are firstly the output value is sent to several places as shown in this figure here the output arrows are unlabeled as they denote the same value in the second case the data flow contains a aggregative value and each of the component is sent to different places as shown in this figure here each of the forked components are labeled when it comes to the term actor, actors are the active objects that interact with the system by either producing data and inputting them to the system or consuming data produced by the system. In other words, actors serve as the source and the sink of data. In the data flow diagrams, actors are represented by a rectangle. Actors are connected to the input and output and lie on the boundaries of the data flow diagrams. For example, in this figure, the different actors are customer and sales clerk, where each of these actors are represented in the boundary values of the data flow diagrams. The next term is the data store. 
a data store are the passive object that act as a repository of data unlike actors they cannot perform any operation they are used to store data and retrieve the stored data they represent a data structure a disk file or a table in the database in the dfd a data store is represented by two parallel lines containing the name of the data store each data store is connected to at least one process input arrow contain information to modify the content of the data store while output arrow contain the informations retrieved from the data store when a part of the information is to be retrieved the output arrow is labeled an unlabeled arrow denotes full data retrieval a two way arrow implies both retrieval and update operation next we are discussing the term constraint constraints specify the conditions or restrictions that need to be satisfied over time they allow adding new rules or modifying existing ones constraints can appear in all the three models of the object oriented analysis in object modeling the constraints define the relationship between objects they may also define the relationship between the different values that an object may take at different time and secondly in dynamic modeling the constraints define the relationship between the states and events of different object and thirdly in functional modeling the constraints define the restrictions on the transformation and computation in a data flow diagram a constraint is rendered as a string within braces for example this figure shows the portion of the data flow diagram for computing the salary of employees of a company that has decided to give incentives to all the employees of the sales department and increment the salary of all the employees of the hr department it can be seen that the constraint department sale it causes the incentive to be calculated only if the department is sales and the constraint department hr causes increment to be computed only if the department is hr so this is how we are adding constraints in a data flow diagram and finally we are discussing the control flows a process may be associated with a certain boolean value and is evaluated only if the value is true though it is not a direct input to the process these boolean values are called the control flows in the data flow the control flows are represented by a dotted arc from the process producing the boolean value to the process controlled by them for example the figure represents a dfd of arithmetic division the divisor is tested for non zero if it is not zero the control flow okay has a value true and subsequently the divide process computes the quotient and the remainder so my dear students these are the different aspects or terms parts of a data flow diagram so as we said a data flow diagram is a graph which show the flow of data value from their source in the object through processes that transform them to their destination on other parts The data flow diagram is a graphical representation of a system that shows the input to the system, the processing upon the input, the output of the system, as well as the internal data stores. DFD illustrates the series of transformation or computations performed on the objects or system and the external controls and objects that affect the transformation. So my dear student hope you had understood this topic so dear students kindly go through this assignment question our question is write in detail about the features of data flow diagram that is write about processes data flows actors data stores constraints and control flows 
so my dear student in the upcoming lecture we will discuss how to design or how to represent a data flow diagram so dear students see you soon until then goodbye thank you and all the best